And one of the things you're constantly saying to me is what's going on with Michelle Moan? What is happening with regard to those allegations of involvement in a, in a VIP lane PPE uh, company? Well, the investigations correspondent for The Guardian, David Conn, has been on this story for, uh, I think, the best, part, the best part of three years. And he has published something of an update this morning. David joins me now. Um, I, I'll just, if I may, David, pick up on some of your previous reports. I know that in November 2020, Moan's lawyer told you that, and I quote, Baroness Moan is not connected in any way with PPE Med Pro, and the lawyers for her husband uh, repeatedly denied that he was an investor in the company or part of a consortium supporting it. And indeed, they told you, and once again, I quote, that he never had any role or function in PPE uh, Medro, MedPro, this is Douglas Barrowman. Uh, and, and that, of course, that insistence, that emphatic denial is absolutely intrinsic to the unfolding story. So what's the latest? Yeah, so, <clears throat> and that, those um, denials that you just read out, James, are just two of an absolute stream that we had from starting to write about this in late 2020 when the contracts were published uh, right through to last year when we revealed the bank document, the leaked bank documents that indicated that Doug Barrowman, Michelle Moan's husband, had been paid £65 million from the profits of PPE MedPro and had transferred £29 million into a trust that had been set up for Michelle Moan and her three adult children. Uh, right through that reporting, um, they've had three different uh, firms of lawyers over time representing the company, Michelle Moan and Doug Barrowman at different times. And we've had um, a stream of constant and repeated and emphatic denials that they weren't involved and these other uh, words not connected mm. Um, the other ways in which we've quoted them. And then in this uh, round, I've just gone back to them recently with some questions. And now a spokesperson for the company who said he was also authorised to speak on their behalf has said um, that they both were involved in PPE MedPro three years on from the start of all the denials. And he also said which is really, I think, um, significant. But he said that the government was fully aware of Baron. I'm reading it now. Yeah. The, the government was fully aware of Baroness Moan's involvement. Like many other peers and MPs on the high priority lane, which is uh, the technical term for the VIP lane, mm. where they fast-tracked offers of PPE from people who had political connections with, with the government or the Conservative Party. They say, they say, like many other peers and MPs on the high priority lane, she, Baroness Moan, acted as an intermediary slash liaison between PP MedPro and the Cabinet Office, DHSC. And as, as you've just read out, James, amongst the denials are uh, not connected in any way with PP MedPro, um, never had any role or function, nor in the process by which contracts were awarded to PPE MedPro. But a very, very interesting detail, which I know you'll see the significance of straight away, is what they're saying is that the government was fully aware of her involvement, was fully aware of Doug Barrowman's role, and that his group would make a commercial profit. That's from their own spokesperson, right? Mm. And they say that... They're saying that they, Doug Barrowman and Baroness Moan, made a full written disclosure of their involvement to the Cabinet Office prior to the award of the PPE contract. So, and that was in May 2020. So they made a full disclosure to the government that they were involved. And yet in public, in response to the media, in response to me, in response to other people that, uh, you know, point like the Good Law Project, yes. pointed to the links right at the beginning, Jolian Maugham just pointed out the apparent links between this company and, and, and Baroness Moan. And in response to all of us publicly 
there were these complete denials of involvement. But what they're saying is, at the same time as that, they'd made a full disclosure to the government and the government was fully aware that they were involved. It's extraordinary. I, I, I mean, it's, it, it, as I read it, as I see it, it's impossible for them to have been telling the truth on both occasions, on the time when they said there wasn't any links at all. And now that they're saying there are links at all, I think up to and including Douglas Barrow and chairing um, the, the, uh, the the sort of pr- process of deciding how they would and uh, go forward with the attempt to secure these contracts. So they can't be simultaneously true, can it, that they weren't involved and were involved. But the easiest thing to check here would be the submission of this statement. So the government would have been aware of the involvement while Barrowman and Moan were issuing endless denials of involvement. That's the logic of what they're saying, right? And so just one element of that that has leapt out to me is that the government has... They cannot have been unaware Mm. of Baroness Moan and Doug Barrowman repeatedly denying involvement. Because, you know, it's been the biggest story of the VIP lane... It's been very high profile. There is no way that government departments are not reading that they're denying involvement. And yet the whole way, and that, and that we're dealing with that, the media is dealing with, with those denials. And yet the whole way through, what they're saying is, but the government was sitting there knowing that they were involved. You, 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 you keep saying the media. I think you're being a bit modest. It's basically you and, and, and Jolyon over at, at the Good Law Project because, of course, most of the newspapers you might expect to be pursuing this alongside you would have been announcing throughout this period that, that you know, there was nothing to see here and or that Boris Johnson was getting all the big calls right. But where, where does it go next, David? Do we know? Yeah, just to be fair on that, James, thanks very much. But, um, you know... Um, the Financial Times has done quite a lot of work no, on it. The Mirror, right. the yes. Mirror originally did, and also the Times uh, has also um, done, you know, done quite a lot of work on it. And people are very concerned about it. And obviously, the procurement of PPE, the awarding of contracts during the pandemic. I mean, when Jolien Morm first revealed the existence of a VIP lane for politically connected people. So what happened was when COVID hit, it's true that not just our government, but governments all around the world were overwhelmed with offers from people who said they could source PPE. Because obviously we had next to no stockpile of PPE, didn't we? And Mm. it was running out almost immediately. And they did desperately have to go and source some, right? Mm. So they did need a way to prioritise credible offers. but in, And this is going to be heard in the COVID inquiry. They're yes. going to have a session on, procure, on the procurement. But instead of prioritising companies whose business was supplying PPE, yeah. as you know, very many of those companies have said publicly they didn't get a look in. They couldn't, they they didn't, didn't get, get their calls returned. They couldn't they, get no, through. Well, we get, had people yeah, yeah. supplying inc- uh, incubators, what are they called? The, the, the big machines that you get hooked up ventilators. to. Ventilators. Ventilators. Yeah. We had people yeah. who had ventilators going begging who couldn't yeah. get their calls returned. Yeah, they, they didn't get their calls returned. Nobody went to the industry. The government didn't just go to the industry and say, um, can, you know, can you get us the best companies to source the PPE from the best suppliers? Right. And so when when Jolien first revealed that, no, the people they prioritized and fast tracked were people who had a connection to the government or a connection to basically to the government. Right. And that was considered credible. Well, we know them. You know, that's come from one of our MPs or that's come from from one of our peers, from a member of the House of, uh, you know, conservative member of the House of Lords. I thought that cannot be right. I remember when he first, I thought that can't be right. You know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. Even a cynical old soul like you, David. (laughs) And here we are. And And here here we we are. are. Three years later, they are admitting involvement after essentially denying it through three different firms of lawyers. Incredible. Uh, with coupled with you know the way that lawyers write these things um, yes, to us, 
consistently throughout. And if it hadn't been, for, if it, if it, if it's not for people who come forward, who are you know who do speak out and who do expose these things over time, I don't think any of this would be known. Whereas at the same time, they're saying that the government knew this all along, while the denials were being made in public. Yeah, murkier and murkier. I mean, do you think we'll? we'll, we'll get to the absolute bottom of it do you think the inquiry will bring the light in well the inquiry is doing a very good job so isn't it, it is, the yes. inquiry is looking like, like it's really proper um i know that um some of the bereaved families have got some concerns about the limited role that they're getting the limited prominence that they're getting the law their lawyers are only allowed to ask i think it's two questions mm. at the end of a session but having said that the fact that they've secured so much documentation um, and, you know, there does seem to be a lot of rigour about it, um, you know, makes it very interesting that when they, the whole, you know, the whole inquiry into the handling of the pandemic, it makes it promising that maybe we will get to the truth and we will learn some lessons. On the procurement part of it, I think uh, what's key is whether it's going to be a general we really struggle to get decent PPE or whether they're really going to get down to the, the, detail, the detail of the, the contracts. Yeah. Uh, I'm very late for the news, which is a, a, a I testament. thought I was keeping you over the news, No, James. don't worry about that. I this is news, that. David. This is news, isn't it, David? There you go. That, that will be my excuse when I get told off later. But just to f clarify, finally, the, the Department of Health and Social Care is still suing PPE MedPro, is it, for the full return of £122 million it believed it paid for substandard surgical gowns it, it, it paid it paid 122 million pounds for gowns and they were they rejected all of them on inspection and they're suing pp medpro for the full return of money plus other co other costs and pp medpro are saying that the gowns were fit for purpose and right. they're defending the claim